Alright, so today we are going to be moving my Koi Angels, which are in this 20 gallon aquarium, into my new 55 gallon river aquarium. And I'm going to give you a look around my whole entire fish room. So, obviously, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. These guys are very darty, and there's a lot of decorations in an aquarium for them to hide. But I'm not going to really need to acclimate them because the water in that aquarium is so similar to the water in this aquarium. So, they should be alright when we're bringing them over, and the temperatures are the exact same. So, Let's do that. Okay, so basically what the plan's gonna be is I'm just gonna net these guys and put them into this bucket and I'm literally just gonna pour the bucket into the aquarium. So let's give this a go. I'm not gonna think this is gonna be easy. It's always the case with the first few that you try and get. They're always really easy to get until the others realize that you're netting them. So here we go, got our first one here. Now these guys are pretty big. The goal is in this aquarium that because the size is bigger and there's only gonna be angelfish, hopefully we get a couple pairs and then we can breed these guys after that. But, here we go. This is good, so far so good. These guys aren't used to being netted, so I think they're pretty confused. We just gotta make sure that the ones at the back don't stay up the back. A little thing, you've probably heard this before, but when you're netting fish, fish actually have a slime coat on them which protects them, and this thing can protect them from all kinds of things like ick and, um, it's just part of their skin. Uh, but when you net them, obviously that slime coat can be deteriorated and rub off on the net and stuff like that. So it's important that when you net the fish, that the aquarium that you move them into, they have enough time to like settle into because otherwise this won't repair. And if you keep netting and netting and netting, what's gonna happen is you won't, like you risk the fish getting sick. This is a really little guy. He's been bullied by the the Krebens is so hard. So sorry, mate. Come here. You're going to a way better home now. That Krebensis knows what's going on. He knows he's not getting netted. He's he's hidden so far. The annoying thing is there's so many twigs in this aquarium. All this gold vine and the net's getting caught on it. Okay, so now the aquarium's empty. There's just a Krebensis in there, but he's hiding because we're netting. And here's the bucket. So in here, I'll zoom in on. But we've got our six koi's. And these guys are obviously a little bit stressed, but let's go and put them into this tank. Come on, you. Awesome. Right. <laughs> right, so these guys are now in their aquarium. And to be honest, they don't seem that stressed. They do look really, really good. Now, these are koi angels. I've said that a million times, but. These guys are koi's and they have this orange and black and silver kind of white color. And I really like the look of them, but seeing them in this aquarium and these guys haven't even fully colored up, they look so good. So um, I'm gonna give these guys a bit of time and I'll show you around the rest of my fish room, uh, all my other tanks, and give them a bit of time to settle in. And then I'll show you this tank, but let's go have a look at everything else. So one of the main things I wanted to show you guys was this aquarium. So. I've shown you guys this aquarium heaps lately, but this is, sorry <laughs> to that um, guy, but this is my Crebensis breeding tank and I'm breeding these pair of Crebensis back here. The tank's really dirty at the moment because there's tons and tons of babies uh, and you can see them here. And I've been feeding them up heaps because I want them to put on as much size as possible so that I can get these guys out and sold. And um, yeah, but I mean this tank's doing really well. It's obviously really cloudy. I've just put in a bunch of like, um, what is it called? Uh, beans, sliced beans, there we go. I put in a bunch of sliced beans and there's tons of debris in the water and the detritus at the bottom of the aquarium like you can see here. And I mean this tank's doing really really well. All the fish are healthy and the future plans for this is just to keep this the same. This is literally a pleco factory as you can see there. There's just tons of these guys and they're actually doing really well as well. I love saying really well, you, you hear me say that in all my videos. Now moving from the angelfish tank to here, Sorry, there's like heaps of mess in this room at the moment. There's so much happening. But I've just moved my five Danios, which I use for the breeding series, into this aquarium. So this is about a 100 litre aquarium. And I don't know what that is. I think that's a 30 gallon, if you guys are an American or using the Imperial system. And yeah, so I put them in here and I've got a big daddy pleco here. Oh, he's just come out. You can see all of his beautiful um, 
bristles there. So that's the big daddy, Bristlenose Pleco, and then his mummy is over there. And these guys are doing well. There's just a little bit of jarve moss and some food in there as well for these guys. But they were moved in yesterday, and they've settled in really, really well. The important thing is that you guys do heaps of water changes and stuff, because that makes your fish really used to you netting them and doing all that kind of stuff. And it makes it really easy for them to move around. And another really important thing is that you keep all of your tanks at a really similar temperature and you keep them all at a really similar pH and stuff like that because it makes moving your fish around so much easier. So yeah, these guys are good. These are the long fin styles and yeah, I'll try and focus. Yeah, these guys are looking really good. The color's not as good as I want it to be in this aquarium and that's because there's no substrate. But yeah, I mean, they look really cool and their long fins are absolutely beautiful. So what you're currently looking at here is my favorite thing in the entire home and this is the grow out tank for the Danios and Yesterday, I got a good batch of bristlenose. So, if you guys look at this, look at how many bristlenose we got. There are so many up in this top corner and throughout the tank. There's a ton of java moss in here, and there's just a cave in here for decoration. But, the exciting thing about this tank is if you come look at this side, because there's no box, look at all these danios. There's so many, and they've just started to get color, so I'll do some close-up video for you guys. Um, they're doing really well. They're full of energy. They've been feeding them three times a day and yeah, I mean, I'm really impressed with this tank too. So this is just a 60 liter aquarium and I'm using this at the moment to grow the fish out and uh, get them to a size big enough that we can sell them. So that's really exciting. Don't worry about this tank. This is not something I wanna talk about at the moment. Um, this is just an endler tank, which I'm currently working on. Uh, I've been struggling with these guys a bit. I mean, they're super sensitive and it's super inbred at the moment. And, oh, it's just disgusting. So don't worry about that tank. This tank's looking good. Uh, the fish in here are absolutely beautiful. I'm super impressed uh, with the job we've done at breeding them. So, okay, so it's been about two hours since I added these guys in and they have really settled in really well. Um, they're looking really good, they're super active and they're actually showing a little bit of mating behavior already. So like these guys are biting and nipping at each other and that's very normal. Um, yeah, the tank's looking really good. The fish are looking really good too and we haven't really lost any color. So you can see here like how pretty some of these angels are. Um, these guys are about a year old now and I'm hoping that they put on a little bit more size and start to pair off. Um, I'm hoping that like with all these logs and stuff in the aquarium that you can see here, that'll provide a really good area for them to spawn on. And I mean, eventually we'll get a pair and then we can add them to one of these tanks down here and have some success breeding them. So yeah, they're taking food. Um, they're coming up to the top of the aquarium when I'm like putting my hand up and you know, they're showing really good signs of health. So hopefully everything turns out really well in this aquarium and we can leave it um, be for the meantime. But thank you for watching this video guys. Um, I really appreciate it and I hope to see you guys in the next one.